This is the most exciting part for me where we get to dig into God's Word. And the title, the message tonight is called Me Versus Me. Me Versus Me. And uh, I want to show you guys a meme. Some of you may have seen this meme before. And this is a SpongeBob meme. Me trying to find the person who's been spending all my money. (laughs) Who's seen this? Who's ever felt like this before? Like, you're, you're like, surely I have not spent all this money. Surely someone has hacked into my account. But then you go into your bank statement and you realize, no, actually, that was me. <laughs> That's a real me versus me moment where you realize I was actually responsible for this. I have a friend, let's call him Martin. And uh, he had someone break into his car and steal a stereo that he had sitting on the back seat. And he was like, so annoyed that someone had done this. And so he was like to himself, he was so happy because he just recently installed security cameras around his house and one of them was pointing on the driveway. And so he went on and he found uh, the footage and he found the guy who had just broken into his car and he was like, that's him. And he like took a screenshot and he posted it on the Wairima Crime Watch page and he was like, if anyone sees this guy, he's an idiot and please report him to police because he's stolen my stereo. And then shortly after, someone informed him it was a photo of himself. <laughs> and he had, <laughs> he had just played himself. <laughs> so in that situation, he found out the person that he really thought was someone else, the person that was responsible was himself. And I'm sure we've all found ourselves in situations where we've actually had to battle ourselves. It's not too hard to battle the things around us and outside of us. That seems like an easier fight sometimes than the battles that we have within. And you would all know this feeling, all the guys who have ever asked out a girl, all the guys who have proposed, like that's, that's like you've got to really, there's a battle on the inside, you know? The, the battle to, to apply for a job, to actually get out there and put your resume in places, that sort of thing. There's, there's a real battle that goes on on the inside. And so I want to talk tonight um, about this topic because I think it's something that we all face. Yes, in those small things, but then there's the big things where we just go, why did I do that? And, and we feel like we sabotaged our own life. We feel like we have sabotaged ourselves. And I, and I think we need to go on a journey. I think it's healthy for us to go on a journey of learning to understand ourselves. Because when you can learn to understand who you are, your nuances, the way that you work, you can actually really avoid a lot of frustration in life. For example, if you're a short-tempered person and you have the realization that you are a short-tempered person, then you might find yourself getting really frustrated at something and then you'll be able to be like, actually, no, you know what? I know I'm short-tempered. I know I need to calm down a little bit. It's all right. Like I, I know for me, when I did a personality test, one of the things that it said was like poor handling of emotions. And all of a sudden, it just explained for, for me so many times why Hannah was struggling to understand how I was feeling. And when she was, um, when she was feeling certain ways, why I couldn't pick that up because of the way that I perceive and, and handle emotions. I also saw uh, stubborn in there. And so I, I had to, I became aware of that. But actually, it's helped me so much because understanding that sometimes I can be stubborn has changed the way that I lead people. It has changed the way that I work uh, in in my employment because I know that sometimes I can be a bit pushy and then I realize, you know what, maybe I'm being a little bit stubborn. And it's actually helped me to avoid future downfall because I've learned to understand myself. So can we see why this is really, really important? The need to understand ourselves. And so I'm really excited to talk about this. And I want to look at a verse, Proverbs 20 verse 5. And this is what it says. Someone's thoughts may be as deep as the ocean, but if you're smart, you will discover them. And it's so true, hey, people's thoughts, what's going on on the inside of us, it can be sometimes so deep that we, we don't even know what's happening on the inside of us. We don't know why we're feeling a certain way. And it can feel like it's so, so deep. But if you're smart, you will discover what's in there. Another version uh, says, one who has insight draws it out. And I think, it's, it, it's, it would be really cool if we could all learn that insight, if we could learn that smart, so we could actually figure out what is going on on the inside of me? Like, why do I act this way? For anyone who's ever found themselves in a repetitive behavior, wondering 
Why do I keep doing that? Why do I keep turning to that? And it can come out in so many different things. It can come out in, in drinking just so that you can feel numb. It can come out in gossiping just so that you can feel better about yourself or feel like you can control the narrative. It can come out in, in porn or gambling just because you just don't know how to control that urge. It can come out in so many different ways in repetitive behaviors. And if we don't actually learn what's going on on the inside, we can find ourselves so frustrated at ourselves, so annoyed at ourselves, feeling like we're our own worst enemy. And so that's the journey that I want to take us on tonight, learning on how to understand ourselves. And I'm very excited because I'm going to be chatting to Cam Simons. And uh, he's, yes, he's the worship leader tonight. And he is one of our great worship leaders here at New Hope. And he's been part of the team, the creative team since high school. And we were friends coming out of high school as we splashed into adulthood and not as connected these days, but I still consider him a good friend. So can we please welcome Cam Simons this evening? And so for many, Cam Simons is the guy who's up here worship leading on a Sunday and that we know you for that. And we know that you have a lovely wife, Alicia. And, uh, but I thought we could get to know you a little bit deeper. So maybe we could just start Sweet. with a bit of a lightning round. Yeah, cool. Are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah. So what's your favorite TV show? Oh man, it's a toss up between The Office and Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, They're just classics. Yeah, they are. So which character do you vibe with the most out of those two? Oh, man. <laughs> I don't agree with that. Is that who you vibe I, with or that's who you see him as? <laughs> I like to think I'm Jake. I think my wife probably thinks I'm more like Jake. That's, uh, yeah. The childish side. Yeah, 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 oh. man. Yeah, definitely. Okay, let's move on. So uh, do you have coronavirus? <sighs> I really hope I don't. <laughs> no. Can I get a positive I don't. on that? <laughs> okay, I don't. Good. I promise. Um. What prescription level are your glasses? I don't know, but it's bad enough that if I don't have them on and I walk past you, I, I won't be able to make out your face. So if I've done that to you, it's nothing personal. I just can't <laughs> see you. <laughs> so it's like if, if you need to have an introvert's day where you just like don't want to see anyone. You yeah, can just, just take them off. It's easy. Real good. I can just pretend no one's there. Yeah. You're all just blobs. This question always um, shows me, it, it always like shows a lot about a person. So I thought it'd be really interesting to ask. Is there anyone that you would like to meet that's like alive today in oh, the realm man. of... That's a really good question. Um, I reckon Louis Thoreau does the Ooh. BBC documentaries. Wait, wait, wait. Does anyone know? Uh, yeah. Louis Thoreau, people. yeah. Yeah. He's just a really interesting guy. He'd, he'd have a lot of really cool stories. That's so the... would you like ask him questions? Nah, or would... I'd just listen. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing of value to add to that conversation. <laughs> uh Okay, and um, what's the best place to eat out, mate? Uh, I'm going to say La Pizziola. Ooh. Yeah, because it's like... La Pizziola fans, anyone? Mm. Oh, a yeah. few people, yeah. yeah. It's a bit sentimental. It's a, one, because they make a really good pizza. Sentimental because of that, and two, also because Leash and I go the heaps, so, you know. Hey. Now that's, it's about 70, 30 pizza. That's cute. <laughs> okay, and I thought it would be cool. One more question. Would you like to plug any product that you don't, don't get to, doesn't get enough love? Uh, yeah, okay. I have one. It's not that good, but it's, I don't know, it's pretty handy. It's like a, an app-controlled power switch because I'm too lazy to bend over behind my desk and turn the, turn the <laughs> switch off. So you just hook it up to Wi-Fi and it does it and you just, you know, on your phone. It's like, Can you hey Siri it? Uh, I don't know. I haven't tried that. It's like peak 21st century. Yes, that would be, yeah. I think you should investigate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So look, I got Cam here tonight, not because he has some amazing interests and gadgets at home, um, but since we're talking about me versus me and going on a journey of discovering and understanding yourself, um, I feel like uh, after we talk, this is something that you've really gone through a lot of. So um, let's talk about that journey. And so let's go back. How, how long have you been part of the worship team? And how has that changed over the years? Yeah, cool. So um, I started on the worship team like a month after my 12th birthday. So it's about 15 years. Um, <laughs> I was really young and not very good. Um, but, <laughs> but they let me stay. So Any I'm very songs? thankful for that. Favorite songs from when you oh, started? Man. A few from Captured, if anyone remembers that. <laughs> that's the new no, that's Hope Church album. They're my favorite. Yeah, yeah. We had an album. Don't look it up. <laughs> you won't be able to find it. No. But we do have a box of unsold copies. 
Um, yeah, okay. So that's when you began and yeah. like tell us like the journey till now. Yeah, cool. So um, yeah, started when I was um, about 12 and kind of that was at like the Purple Congregation back in the days of congregations and um, sort of just went through high school years just kind of doing my thing. And then um, uh, when I graduated, I was about 18 they got me up to worship leads. So that's when I started worship leading. Yeah. Um, and when I see you up here worship leading, like every week, mm. I kind of think to do that, you've got to have a certain level of confidence. And then to be doing it for so long, there's also got to be a, like uh, a huge level of, of calling uh, mixed in as well. And so, you know, I guess I probably wanted to ask like um, – would you say that you've always had that confidence? I know that everyone has nerves and stuff, but would you say you've always had confidence doing what you felt God has called you to do? Um, I mean, I wish the answer was yes, but no. <laughs> um, I guess there's been a lot of times when for, for someone like me who is a pretty classic introvert, um, that's why I'm happy just kind of chilling back there on the guitar to like just be smack dab in the middle here um, is is pretty confronting and so there's been a lot of times where I've had that real struggle between like like I want to follow my calling but also I kind of hate this and <laughs> I just want to like not um but then at the same time like you know following your calling is not always easy um and like there are times even now where I'll be leading for a Sunday and like the five minutes before the service I'm out in the tech room like just praying like God please give me confidence please give me confidence and I'm just like man, I'm ready to walk out the door and not do this. But um, it's kind of that push through is where that... So when you, know, you say, like, I'm ready to walk out the door, what what level of seriousness is that? Like, are you, are you having a laugh or...? Um, yeah, no. <laughs> um, no, I guess for me, like, I uh, the, the biggest struggle I've always had is, is a lot with... Like, I've kind of had a lot of mental health issues with anxiety and depression. And, and anxiety in particular has been a really big struggle. And, and, you know, that feeling of, like, I'm in a safe space, which is the church, which is my home church. But it feels very foreign and very cold and very scary. And it's like, you know, I'm sitting there, I feel physically ill. I feel like I can't breathe. And I'm, you kind of just have that real physical reaction, a real mental reaction where it's just like, this isn't just nerves. This is actually like I'm, you know. Um, yeah. So... Yeah, it's kind of like... And, and like, we're not just talking a one-off? No, no, it's a... I don't want to say it's pretty regular. It, it, there's a, it's been a long journey of that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, to you, like, when this first started happening, more than just regular stage fright, if you could say it, um, w was that something that you felt like you, you knew what was happening or did it feel like, in a sense, you your, were your own enemy, something was happening? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I did and I didn't, like, it's kind of something I've struggled with for a long time. Like, the first time it really happened was when I was, like, 15 before I was even worship leading and I kind of went through, like, a three or four month period where I couldn't sleep, you know, it was a whole thing again, like, my room's my safe space and it's not safe, it's, like, everything feels scary and I can't breathe anyway. So, it's kind of, like, that has gone through a lot of my life so far up to here and so getting to that point out there, for example, in the tech room, um, I kind of understand it, but I also don't. And it's like that real frustration of like, if this is what I'm called to, why do I have to deal with this? And that's what I don't understand um, or, how, you know, I really struggle to understand. So, yeah. I think that's a, a question that so many people would ask, especially when you think this is the right thing. Like, surely I'm doing the right thing here, but then why, uh, why is this thing happening on the inside of me? Yeah. I mean, there, <laughs> there was a period where I was kind of like, I questioned whether it was actually the right calling. I was like, am, am I here by mistake? Have they just not stopped me from doing it? <laughs> it's like, because it was like... <laughs> someone's someone's going to tap you on the shoulder and yeah, say, yeah. it was all just a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, okay. Well, um, with all of this, obviously you've already explained one sort of extreme, but did you ever find yourself reaching either a physical or, or a mental extreme because... Um, because you didn't deal with it in the right way or because you didn't understand how to deal with what was happening inside you? Yeah, I mean, there was, there's was. there been a lot of points in my life where I've kind of let things run a little bit wild. Um, like the most recent example was probably a couple of years ago. It was about a two or three-year period where I couldn't drive a car past about 6 p.m. Pretty much once it got dark, I couldn't drive a car because it was like I know how to drive a car, but it was like um, – it was just like petrifying anxiety and fear. And so um, like 
yeah, for a, a period, my wife had to drive me around at night because I couldn't do it. If I got in the car seat, I'd have massive panic attacks. If I tried to drive, I'd have to pull over and, you know, compose myself and, you know, and so, and it was a period where I just let something that was probably should have been dealt with sooner, I let it just go and it just compounded and got worse and worse. Yeah. So what are, what are some ways that maybe you tried that didn't work that you thought you, that you thought, like, this is how I'm going to deal with this. Yeah, I mean, I did a lot of internalizing because that's just what I do with things. So, <laughs> um, no, I think I, I tried the whole just, like, suck it up and just do it, but that doesn't work when you're dealing with this stuff. Um, I think, like, again, it's the whole, like, your own, like, versing yourself in a sense because um, the logical side of me is, like, this is really silly. You shouldn't be feeling anxious about this, but the non-logical side of me is like, this is crazy, get out of that car seat. Um, and so trying to deal with it myself and try and work it through myself was like, you know, it just wasn't going to work. Yeah. Um, so then so then where did you find progress? Um, well, for, for this particular example, the progress was really in actually going and getting help. So going and seeing my doctor and getting and going and seeing a psychologist um, because that was kind of the, um, I think that was the point where I recognized that this wasn't something that was just going to go away. Um, and, you know, like, um, like praying about it is good and worshiping about it is good and it can sometimes give temporary kind of feelings of peace. But I think there was definitely an element of like, I need to talk to someone and deal with this. And I need to talk to someone who is, you know, qualified or capable, not just anybody. So, yeah. yeah. So, was that difficult to go from just keeping it all to yourself to... Yeah, it was. I mean, I mean, it was kind of like because you sort of deal with, yeah, like I said, you, you want to internalize it a lot. Um, and so, to, to take that step requires... I guess, putting a lot of yourself out there to someone, in this case, a, a GP who, you know, doesn't really know you. So that's a pretty confronting thought in and of itself. Yeah. But I think on the other end of it too is that idea that I know for a while I kind of sold myself a bit of a lie about like because I'm a leader in a church and a worship leader, like I should be able to deal with this without having to go and get like professional help. And so um, in a sense, I struggle with that because it was like admitting that I did had to get help, but it was a good thing in the in the long run. Like it was, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. So then, uh, how how has this affected your relationship with God along the whole journey? Um, I mean, I, I've, like obviously positive. I'm still here, um, but I think there's been a lot of moments where it's really been uh, like kind of like a why God kind of moment. Um, because Who's, who he has asked that question yeah. before. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, everybody's been through that, you know, and it's like a lot of frustrating nights. Like I'd, I'd be up here and lead worship and then be driving home and just be like either super anxious or like super depressed and just like, I should not be doing this. Like this is not. And so you'd go, why God, why put me through this? Um, but at the same time, like, I guess through this journey, like it's been in the real quiet places with God that I've learned more about myself and how to kind of work through some of these issues and to kind of, you know, deal yeah. with that. So, And God's obviously not like a vending machine that you're going to get exactly what yeah. you want whenever you go to him. Yeah. Um, and you're just going to, everything's going to be fine and dandy on yeah. strike number one. <laughs> hey, um, that's, that's exactly right. Like, I mean, I think, um, you know, that whole, yeah, like like praying and expecting it to be gone the next minute. Like it, it just doesn't always happen. Um, but I've found that like when I pray for things and then maybe I look back six months later, I kind of realize the prayer was maybe answered but just in a different way and maybe through wow. some different different explorations and understandings. So, yeah. What a great perspective. Very good. So is there anything else that you would say like that helped you on your journey to like understanding yourself because you're because you're now in a spot where um you know how it works mm. you know the the thoughts that happen in your mind mm. and we don't really have time to go there but you mm. explained to me some of the things that you know you'll do to to you know when you recognize what's happening on the inside you know exactly what to do um so is there anything else that helped you along that journey of finally f understanding what's going on on the inside i think um like, yeah, you know, I talked a lot about talking to people, but finding people that you you trust to help you kind of fight yourself in a sense. <laughs> um, 
and so not just sort of talking to anybody, but people you really trust. And the big thing is um, uh, people who will push you when the time is right, but not push you when it's not. Um, because, you know, well-meaning people can unfortunately do that. But, yeah, find the right people who you can trust and know your story and, and can push you when they need to. So, yeah. that was a big thing. And, um, and, and why yeah. do you think it's hard to, to, like, actually talk to someone and find the right person? I think um, – I know, like, I guess coming back to, to, like, me personally, like I said, you know, there was – a lot of things around probably pride, I guess, is, is the big one. But, um, you know, I know for me it was like I see a lot of people spilling a lot of stuff and telling everybody everything. It's like I don't want to be one of those people. And I think a lot of, you know, I, I would dare say that a lot of people probably feel the same way that, that when they do want to talk, they don't want to be just one of those people who kind of just tells everything. Um, I know the other struggle that I really had was this concept of like what if what I'm dealing with is just fake and made up in my head and like in the sense of like, I'll tell someone, they'll be like, that's not a real issue. You just need to deal with that. <laughs> and it's like, so I think that that kind of acknowledging that that actually it is a real struggle and you need to get help for that, not just something that you've just yeah. decided is an issue. And how many times do you think you just downplayed it and was like, oh, this is not that big of a deal? Oh, years and years, like a long time. Yeah, yeah. really long. So then going on this journey for so long, um, is there anything that you kind of wish you knew earlier or anything that if you were to go back and talk to teenage Cameron, um, that would really help? What would you, what would you say? Um, yeah, I mean, probably the first thing is, um, like don't try and pursue perfection. Being imperfect is okay. Um, I know like I, I've talked a lot about worship leading, but that's just kind of the, that's the thing. So, um, like for me, for a, for a long time, worship leading was about like getting enough spiritual points to be able to actually do it. And if I didn't have enough, like Pastor Chris would come up with like a shepherd's crook and like pull me off platform. <laughs> um, and so kind of for me was like recognizing that like my imperfection is actually what qualifies me to serve God and be used by God. So, um that's a really big thing. Um, and yeah, the other one is just, yeah, speak to someone, talk to someone, don't internalize, just, yeah. you know, take the step. And what about for you, like being able to recognize what's happening within? Um, yeah, no, it, that's, that's another really big part. I think you mentioned it when you were introing the, uh, the message around um, recognizing patterns is a big thing. So I think, you know, if I was saying to 18 year old Cam, like, for example, with food, it's like, the, the the really bad food you're eating was actually a symptom of another issue, which was, you know, so it's like... So what was that for you then? So that was like recognize that pattern of going, okay, you're eating food because you want to feel something, but that's not a good reason to eat that really bad food. And, you know, so it was kind of like recognize that pattern yeah. and go, all right, something needs to change and I need to deal yeah. with that. Because you tried to um, lose weight a number of times... Um, but you're looking great, by the way. Cam's lost 20 kilos. Um, 40. What? 40 kilos. <laughs> 40 kilos. <laughs> oh, can you imagine me if I lost 40 kilos? <laughs> There'd um, be nothing left, man. <laughs> so that's like, yeah. So for you, you, you tried a number of times. Can you explain the difference between what was unsuccessful and what was successful? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a diet method. It was mental health stuff. Like it was um, – so uh, it wasn't just, I mean, you know, eating for stress because my job can be pretty crazy stressful. But at the same time, it was um, – like I said, you know, sometimes it was eating because I had a day where I felt numb and I just wanted to feel something. So I'd eat something to feel good. So tackling the issues that were kind of behind that, was actually it didn't really matter what method I used to lose weight. It was like until I dealt with that, it wasn't going to work. So, you know. And that and that came from chatting, like mm. actually being open and chatting yeah. about it. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Just talking to talking to people. So yeah. yeah. Wow. So do you feel like you've come to a place where I don't know you, you get everything? Like I understand it all, or how's the journey look? Um, yeah, certainly not. <laughs> um, I mean, the journey's still going on. Like, I guess um, I still struggle with this stuff, but the journey progresses. I mean, it's a journey. So there's like, there's always progress. There's always moving forward. Um, and so for me, um, 
yeah, the journey is still ongoing. There's still things that I need to learn and understand, but I've progressed to the point where I can understand when I'm shooting myself and stopping myself from stepping forward when I need to. So, yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Well, I think we should thank Cam right now for coming up in front of everyone and sharing your struggles, especially when your struggle is coming up in front of everyone and having your struggles known. So thanks, Cam. Let's thank him one more time. And I know Cam's journey is one of uniqueness and um, obviously not everyone here is going through the same stuff. But I just wanted to pull it back to that core thought of understanding yourself, going on a journey of actually understanding what's happening under the hood. Because for Cam, that when he, when he began to discover that sort of stuff, that's when he could begin to implement healthy behaviors and healthy measures in his life. And I think for so many of us, if we're wondering why our life has found itself in a wreck, maybe there's some unhealthy behaviors um, unhealthy decisions that we've made because we've responded in the wrong way, responded in an inappropriate way to the way that God has created us because God has created each and every one of us unique and one person who can handle one thing, God has given them the capacity to deal with that. Maybe God has given the other person a different spirit and they need to react differently and it's just the uniqueness and the way that God has created everyone and I think there's so much that we can apply from that and so I've got some questions that I want us to ask ourselves tonight. And this is where it gets uh, to you. We just chatted with Cam a lot, but I want you to start thinking about yourself right now and ask these, these questions. And this week in our life groups, we're actually gonna be talking about this. If you're part of a young adult life group, we're gonna make a life group discussion guide available. It's already finished and it will be ready to go sent out to leaders straight after the service. Um, but this is something that I want us to wrestle with right now. And a question I want to ask is, what behaviours am I repeating that are only temporary fixes? Because I know so many friends that I've seen in the past that just drank to numb themselves. And then there's the opposite, which is what Cam talked about, which is when you can't feel anything, just trying to do something just so that you can feel anything. And there's repetitive behaviours behind that. Maybe it's porn because you don't know any other way to satisfy the urges of what's happening on the inside. Maybe it's junk food to feel good. Maybe it's gambling for the rush. Maybe it's gossiping so that you can feel like you have some sort of control in this big, wide, crazy world. But whatever it is, it's healthy to sit back and ask ourselves, not just what am I doing, but why? Why am I doing that? And getting to the core of that can really help us to then begin to act in a bit, much better way. Question number two, do I have people that I trust who can tell me things about myself that I can't see? Because sometimes we go on a journey of understanding ourselves, but we just actually need other people to have that insight that they have. I've learned so much about myself from my wife. I've learned so much about myself from the way that Pastor Chris has observed my leadership and Pastor Sue has seen me around the office and has spoken into my life. I've observed and been able to alter course in my life so many times from the input of others. And so do you have someone that you trust? Because it's got to be someone that we actually trust. It can't just be any old Joe Blow. Have you chosen to seek God about who you are? Because God's our Creator. God created you with a purpose. He created you with a unique identity. He knows how He knit you together. And so I think one of the most important places we can go to when it comes to understanding ourselves, just like Cam said, his journey of prayer with God really helped him to understand what was going on. And that just comes back to the fact that God knows the most about you more than anyone else. And have, so have you gone on a journey of talking and, and, and asking God about you? Might feel a bit weird, but it's worth it. Where have I become frustrated with myself? Felt like I'm my own worst enemy. And have you written yourself off and said, this is me, this is just who I am, I just always act like that. I just always find myself in that ditch. Or are you willing to pick up, pick up the boxing gloves again? Are you willing to say, I'm, I'm ready to face this again? Have you written yourself off or are you, are you ready to deal with it? Have you allowed the voice of the devil to shut down parts of who you really are. Something 
we didn't get to talk to you, but um, Cam was telling me about how the difference between recognizing when anxiety is talking and when God's talking. And too often our decisions are based off the wrong voice. And the devil, he will come in with a condemning voice and he'll tell you that you're not worth it and he'll try and convince you and change your course of action. So it's so, so important to be able to learn God's voice. So have you allowed the voice of the devil in or do you know how to seek God's voice? And lastly, where do you need to push through instead of giving up? Sometimes we do need to learn ourselves and understand when too much is too much and when we need to pull back. But there's also a time for us to push forward, push ourselves. So where do you need to push through instead of giving up? And you know, I believe all, uh, through all these questions, through whatever you're dealing with, whatever is been, has been happening in your world, whatever frustrations you have, even with yourself, I know that um, going on a journey of discovering yourself, not just who you are today, but actually who God created you to be, what God has for you in your future, uh, that's going to be a journey that's so, so healthy. So can we all stand? I want to pray for us tonight. And, uh, and I just want to pray for anyone right now who has a frustration with themselves where you feel like maybe the enemy has been you all along. And I, I don't want to pray for you and I, I just want to release you. I want, I want to pray that God releases you from that feeling of responsibility, but moves you into a place of healthy understanding of who He created you to be. So can everyone just close their eyes? This is a bit of a private moment, but I do want to know who I'm praying for. So if that's you, can you just raise your hand if you're frustrated with some parts of yourself in some way? And, or you've been dealing with repetitive behaviors that you just want to you just want to get rid of. There's hands everywhere. This is awesome. Like 25 hands already. Thank you guys. Lord, I just pray for each and every person who's raised their hand and maybe the maybe the people as well who haven't but know that they need to deal with some stuff on the inside. Lord, I pray that you'd help us on our journey of understanding ourselves. God, I pray that you would rebuke the voice of the devil right now, that the devil's voice of condemnation would not overpower your voice. Lord, let your voice be the loudest in our life, the voice of future, the voice of how you created us. Lord, let that be the loudest and help us all as we go on this journey. In Jesus' name, amen. And if there's, uh, if you can all just keep your eyes closed, I, I wanna pray again, but I wanna pray for a different pe group of people right now. And maybe you just heard Cam's story about, you know, praying and, and discovering more about who he was from God. Maybe this is your first time in a church. Maybe you've been coming to church for a while, but God's never actually been part of your story. You know, this church is, is full of people who have had their lives uh, changed for the better because of God's involvement in their life. And, and I think we each have an opportunity tonight to respond in a way that says, God, I want to bring you back to the center. God, I want to I want you to be part an active part of my life right now. Not a one-off decision, but God, I want you to be actively involved in my life. And you know what Jesus did on the cross for us? Uh it it, it put away everything that could have ever held us back from God. He took all all of our guilt, all of our sin, all of our shame, everything that would have ever stopped us from connecting to God. He dealt with it. So now there's nothing separating us from God. And if you want God to be actively involved in your life, you can, you can make a decision right now that's going to allow God, let God in, into your heart. And so I want to put that offer out and I want to ask right now, if you'd be comfortable enough to raise your hand so that I can pray for you. Is there anyone here today that you just want to bring God into the center of your life? You just want God to start to play an active part in your story. Awesome. Thank you. you put your hand down. Anyone else? Awesome. Thank you. Two people already. Three people. Thank you. You can put your hand down. You just know that now is the time that you want to write God into your story. Anyone else before I pray? Three people already. Four. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Lord, I just pray for these people, those who put their hands up and also those who didn't. I just pray that as you become a part of their story from today forward, as you become actively involved in their lives, Lord, that they would find you in their points of need. They'll find you in their points of joy. They'll find you evident in every part of their life and that you'd be guiding them, helping them along the way. God, giving them the courage to pray to you and, and to make you a part of their life. In Jesus' name, amen. And we're going to pray a prayer together. Um, we're going to pray it out loud as a family just because uh, we really believe this prayer is a great way to... Uh, 
speak out loud and authenticate and articulate the decision that you've just made if you just put your hand up. So let's pray this together. Dear Dear Jesus, Jesus, I believe believe in you. you. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Amen. Amen. Can we give it up for those people who just made that decision? And I just want to encourage every single person, hey, God's not done yet. In your life, God's not done yet. Those things that you thought were lost, those things that you get frustrated at that make you cry at night, those those areas of life where you keep hitting roadblocks, God's not done yet. God can continue to work in your life. So let's seek Him for who He created us to be. I'm going to hand over to my beautiful wife, Hannah. She's going to tell us what to do.